Welcome to our lecture online. Can you imagine a world without rivers? Not with human inhabitants. Human inhabitants depend in a large part to the presence of rivers. They provide water not just for people, but for animals and birds and plants. It is really the lifeblood of the world in a way, because without those rivers, we probably wouldn't be here. Now, if you take a look at the world and you look where the major rivers are, you then realize that's where the major civilizations are. For example, civilization in large part started at the Tigris and Euphrates River there in the Middle East. Again, those are very important rivers for that part of the country. If you look at Europe, we have the Loire, the Rhine, the, Dan the Danube, and the Thames in England. And again, those rivers were essentially the lifeblood. Much of the industry and the population live around those rivers and depend on those rivers for transportation, for water, and for agriculture. If you look at the United States and Canada, North America here, you can see that the Columbia River is an extremely important river providing water for the northwest part of the country. The Colorado River provides water for this extremely large region of the country where it's very, very dry, and yet the Colorado River provides an enormous amount of the water there. Then we have the Missouri River and the Mississippi River, which is the lifeblood of the central part of the country. Notice again, we have the transportation on those rivers and we have the water. A lot of the population depends on just those few rivers for agricultural water and for drinking water. Again, if you look at South America, the Amazon is an extremely important river that provides water for enormous quantities of people and, and, and villages. We have the Parana River, the Uruguay River, the Paraguay River providing a lot of the water in Argentina. And then if you go to Africa, notice we have the Nile, and if you think about the Nile, you think about Egypt, about 90% of the entire population of Egypt lives along the Nile, and that's where all the agriculture happens, that's where Cairo is at. And without that Nile, there would not be an Egypt. So the entire population depends on this one major river. We have the Congo River, where Zaire uh, is dependent tremendously on that river. We have the, Ni the Niger, which provides water for the, the country in Africa with the largest population. We have Senegal, the river there that provides enormous amount of water for agriculture in that region. I forgot the name of that river and I didn't write it down. I guess I have it on this map right here. But again, if you take a look at all the various places and then Asia again, notice we have the Indus, the Ganges and the Brahma, Brahmaputra River. Those three rivers combined provide water for almost a population of 2 billion people. If you take Pakistan, India and Bangladesh together, that, that's a population of about 1.7 billion people. And those three rivers provide a tremendous portion of the water required by those people. Then we have in China, we have the Yellow River and the Yangtze River, which of course are extremely important for a lot of the agriculture in the agriculture region of China. And then we have the Mekong River, which provides a lot of water for all the uh, far southeast uh, countries like Vietnam and, and uh, Cambodia and Thailand and those regions right there that depend upon that tremendous amount of water coming from those regions. And then in Africa, uh, not Africa, Australia, you can see that the two major rivers in Australia are in the region of the country where you have the vast majority of the population. The rest of the, the continent is extremely dry and there's virtually no rivers to speak of to provide water. Again, if it wasn't for all those major, uh, major rivers around the world, you wouldn't have the kind of civilization, the kind of life that we would have on this world today. The, the ability to sustain those enormous amount of populations in the various regions of the world completely depend upon the presence of those rivers and the waters that they bring, not just for drinking, for agriculture, for industry, and all the other things. So we should take good care of those rivers. We don't always, or some of those rivers are extremely polluted. We should clean up our act and provide the means and the, and the mechanisms to clean the water up so that we can have those rivers for a long time to come. But again, life depends on the availability of water and the availability of water comes from many of the rivers around the world. And so therefore, there's another reason why it's such an enormous, magical place for us to live on the earth with the presence of those rivers all over that provide the drinking water and the water that we need for us to live.